In this video, I will be discussing about linear and nonlinear relationships. The extreme values of the correlation coefficients of negative 1 and positive 1 occur only in the case of a perfect linear relationships. And that happens when the points lie exactly along a non-vertical or non-horizontal line, which means that all the data points fall on a straight line. But take note that that line should not be a vertical or a horizontal line. Now, also, we should take note that correlation value of zero doesn't guarantee that there's no relationship between the two variables. It is just that there's no linear relationship. Likewise, a covariance value of zero doesn't mean that there's no relationship between the two variables because there are really interesting relationships such as curvilinear relationships and cluster forms whose covariances are zero as well as the correlation coefficients are zero but their relationships are very interesting to study. So at this point, allow me to give you one example that is a linear and one example that is non-linear and I will be computing here their corresponding variances and covariances together with the correlation coefficients here. So I have here six subjects and the first variable x sub 1 is the amount of deposited money and y sub 1 the second variable is the interest amount obtained from this deposited money. So for the first subject who deposited $1,000 he earns $50 as an interest. The second subject deposited $1,500, earned an interest of $75, and so on and so forth for the six subjects. So to compute for the mean for the first variable x sub 1, we need to add all these numbers, 1,000 plus 1,500 plus 1,800 plus 1,240 and 2,000 added to 1,100. It gives you a sum of 8,640 here. So to compute for the mean of the variable x sub 1, we have the summation of all values in the variable x sub 1 divided by how many of them. And we know that the sum is 8,640. So we divide this one by 6 because we have 6 individuals here. So the quotient is 1,440. And this is the mean for the variable x sub 1. Also, to find for the mean of the variable y sub 1, we have the sum of all the values of the variables of y sub 1 divided by how many of them. So this is adding 50 plus 75 plus 90 plus 62 plus 100 plus 55 gives you a sum of 432. So this is 432 here divided by 6. So this is having a quotient of 72. So 72 is the mean for variable x sub 1. Also, we can compute for its variance. So the variance of the variable x sub 1, which is equal to the summation of all the square deviations of the values of x sub 1 from its mean. And we divide this one by n minus 1 since we consider the six subjects as a sample of all the subjects. So we need to subtract each value from the mean. And the mean of this is 1,440. So 1,000 minus 1,440, you will have a difference of negative 440. And 1,500 minus 1,440, we have a difference of 60. Also, 1,800 minus 1,440, we have 360. So 360 here. And then 1,240, Minus 1,440, we have a difference of negative 200 here. And then 2,000 minus 1,440, we have a difference of 560. And then 1,100 minus 1,440, we have a difference of negative 340 here. And then we square these differences. 
So the square of negative 440 is 193600. And then the square of 60 is 3600. Also the square of 360 is 129600. Also the square of negative 200 is 40,000. So we have here 40,000. And the square of 560 is 313,600. Also we have the square of negative 340 which is 115,600. And adding the six numbers here, we have a sum of 796,000 here. So the variance of the variable x sub 1 is equal to the sum of the squared deviations from its mean, which is 796,000 divided by 6 minus 1 here, because this is a sample. And the quotient is 159,200 here. And this is the variance for the variable x sub 1. Also, we can compute for the variance of the variable y sub 1. And this is equal to the summation of the squared differences of every value of y sub 1 from its mean divided by n minus 1. So to get this one, we need to subtract every y by its mean. So 50 minus 72 that is negative 22. Also, 75 minus 72, we have 3. And then 90 minus 72, we have 18. And then 62 minus 72, we have negative 10. And 100 minus 72, we have 28. And then 55 minus 72, we have negative 17. And then squaring this number negative 22, we have 484. And the square of 3 is 9. The square of 18 is 324. The square of negative 10 is 100. The square of 28 is 784. And the square of negative 17 is 289 here. And Adding the six numbers here, we have 1,990. So this is equal to 1,990 divided by 6 minus 1. And the quotient is equal to 398. So this is the variance of the variable y sub 1. And computing for the covariance of the two variables x sub 1 and y sub 1, we have the summation of the product of the deviations of x sub 1 from its mean and the division of the values of y sub 1 from its mean also. And this will be divided by n minus 1. And this can be computed by multiplying this column and this column here. So the deviation of x sub 1 from its mean and the deviation of y sub 1 from its mean. So negative 440 times negative 22, it gives you 9,680. And the product of 60 and 3 is 180. Then the product of 360 and 18, we have 6,480. Also, the product of negative 200 by negative 10, we have 2,000 here. And the product of 560 and 28, we have 15,680. And then we have negative 340 and negative 17, we have 5,780. And then adding these numbers, we have 39,800. So therefore, our covariance, which is equal to the sum of these products, which is this one, 39,800 divided by 6 minus 1. And then the quotient is equal to 7,960. 
and this is a positive number. So our covariance of the two variables x sub 1 and y sub 1 is a positive number. So this is our covariance value and this gives us the idea that the relationship between the two is positive which means they have a direct relationship. As x sub 1 increases, the y sub 1 increases also. But as x sub 1 decreases, the y sub 1 decreases. Now let's compute for the r, the correlation coefficient between x sub 1 and y sub 1. And this is equal to the covariance between x sub 1 and y sub 1. Because as what we have discussed, that this is the standardized version of covariance. So we will divide this one by its corresponding standard deviations. So we have the covariance which is equal to 7960. We divide this one by their corresponding standard deviations. And the standard deviation of x sub 1 is just the square root of this. So we have the square root of 159,200 times the square root of 398. Because 398 is the variance for y sub 1. And the square root of the variance is the standard deviation. So we have to divide these numbers 7960 by this product. And you can check using your calculator that the quotient is positive 1. So our correlation coefficient is positive 1. Which gives us the idea that the relationship is a positive relationship. And not just an ordinary positive relationship. It is a positive perfect relationship. Because we've got the highest value of R which is 1. So this is a perfect positive relationship. Which means that there is a positive perfect relationship between the amount of money deposited and the interest amount it earns. Now let us graph this data here. Just as um, a simple graph. So 1,000, 1,100, 1,200, 1,300, 1,400, 1,500, 1,600, 1,700, 1,800, 2,000. And I'll just label this one here as the 1,000 and here the $2,000 and at the middle is the 1,500. And suppose this is our 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So 60, 70, 80, 100. And this is our 90. So plotting the points, we have 1,000, it's 50. And then for 1,500, 75. So where is that 75? 75 is here. And then 1,800, 90. So 1,890. So the 90 is here. So 1240, 62, somewhere here. And then 2100. So we have 2000 here, which is 100. And then we have 1155. 1100, which is here, 55. And then you can check that the pattern of a relationship is linear. All the data points fall exactly in one straight line. How do I know that? I know it in advance because the R coefficient, the R value is positive 1. Meaning it's a perfect linear relationship. So I expect that the graph is a straight line slooping upward. And then all the data points will fall on this one straight line. So both values, the covariance and the R value are positive because this is having a positive relationship but the value of the covariance which is 7960 does not have any bearing to the relationship it's only the direction which is positive but the r value gives you a direction as well as the strength that the relationship is perfect because the value is positive one so at this point, let's try another example which looks into the work experience in terms of the number of months and their corresponding job satisfaction of the employees. So I have here six employees measured in terms of their work experience by months and their job satisfaction in a continuum of seven. So the highest point in the job satisfaction is seven, which means that you are fully satisfied and one is the least value of the satisfaction.
So for the first employee, we have five months in his work experience, but he gives a job satisfaction of one. The second employee whose experience is 45 months, he gives a score of four as his job satisfaction. So let us try to find out here the mean for the variable x sub 2. And the mean is obtained by taking the sum of all the values in x sub 2 divided by how many of them. So we just add all the values in x sub 2 and the sum is 180. So this is equal to 180 divided by 6. And the quotient is 30. And that means that the average work experience of these six employees is 30 months. How about for the variable y sub 2, their job satisfaction? Their mean of the job satisfaction is obtained by the summation of y sub 2 divided by how many of them? And to get the sum, we just add these numbers and the sum of this is 24. So this is 24 divided by 6. So 24 divided by 6 is 4. So this is the average job satisfaction rating of these six employees. Also, we can compute for the variance here. The variance of x sub 2. And the variance is the sum of the square deviations of all the values of x sub 2 from its mean divided by n minus 1. So, we subtract each value by its mean of 30. So, 5 minus 30 is equal to negative 25. 45 minus 30, that's 15. 35 minus 30, that's 5. 55 minus 30, that's 25. And then 15 minus 30, that's negative 15. And 25 minus 30, that is negative 5. And then squaring these differences, we have 625 being the square of negative 25. The square of 15 is 225. The square of 5 is 25. The square of 25 is 625. And the square of negative 15 is also 225. And the square of negative 5 is 25. So adding these numbers, we've got a sum of 1,750 here. So 1,750 divided by 6 minus 1. And the quotient is equal to 350. So this is our covariance for the variable x sub 2. Now we can compute also for the variance of y sub 2. And the variance of y sub 2 is the sum of the square deviations of every value in y sub 2 from its mean. And we divide this one by n minus 1. So we will obtain the difference of every value from its mean of 4. So we have 1 minus 4, that's negative 3. And 4 minus 4, that's 0. 7 minus 4, that's 3. 1 minus 4, that's negative 3. 4 minus 4 is 0, and 7 minus 4, it's 3. Then squaring these numbers, we have 9, because this is the square of negative 3. And the square of 0 is 0, the square of 3 is 9, the square of negative 3 is 9, and the square of 0 is 0, and also the square of 3 is 9. So adding these four nines, we have 36 as the sum. So this is... 36 divided by 6 minus 1. And the quotient between 36 and 5 is 7.2. So this is the variance of the variable y sub 2. So at this point, let us compute also the covariance of the variable x sub 2 and y sub 2. And we know that the formula is equal to the summation of the product of x sub 2 minus its mean and y sub 2 from its mean here. So we divide this one by n minus 1. And to obtain this one, we need to multiply this column, the difference of x sub 2 from its mean, by this column, the difference of y sub 2 from its mean. So negative 25 times negative 3, that is 75. 15 times 0 is 0. 5 times 3 is 15 
and 25 times negative 3, that's negative 75, and negative 15 times 0 is 0, and then negative 5 times 3, that's negative 15. And you notice that 75 cancels with negative 75, 15 cancels with negative 15, so the sum is 0. So the covariance is 0 divided by 6 minus 1. So the covariance here is 0. So this is the covariance between the two variables, which are x sub 2 and y sub 2. Which means that since the covariance is not positive nor negative, because the value is 0, it gives us the idea that there is no linear relationship between these two variables. How about for the correlation coefficient, x sub 2 and y sub 2? It's r value. And we know that the r value is just the covariance between x sub 2 and y sub 2 divided by its standard deviations of x sub 2 and y sub 2. But because the numerator is 0, whatever is the denominator, even if you write there, the square root of 350 and you multiply this one to the square root of 7.2, because the numerator is 0, the value is also 0. So this is the correlation coefficient between x sub 2 and y sub 2. So this is the correlation coefficient between the two variables, which indicates that there is no linear relationship between the two variables. Now let us sketch the graph between these two variables here. So we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and then 60. So it's right, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, and then 50, and we have 60 here. And we know that this is our experience variable in terms of the number of months here while the y-axis is our job satisfaction so one two three four five six seven so we have here one two three four five six there and then seven so let's plot the points when the work experience is five months the job satisfaction is one when the work experience is 45 months so somewhere here that is four so it's here and when the work experience is 35 months so 35 that is seven so let's just approximate it here and then when the experience is 55 months it's one also for 15 months so here that's four it's here and then for 25 that's seven so let's approximate it here and as you can see the relationship is not linear because if you trace maybe the points it forms maybe if you trace this one the relationship is curvilinear so it is like a curve opening downward that is why the covariance is zero as well as the correlation coefficient is zero and that means that there is no linear relationship there is a relationship but the relationship is not linear because the pattern seems to follow a curve opening downward so in summary this is just a comparison of a linear relationship versus a non-linear relationship and take note of their covariances and their correlation coefficients we notice that this is a perfect relationship the r value is positive one this is not linear the r value is zero and also here which is having a positive linear relationship perfect the covariance is positive while here which is non-linear the covariance is zero and that's a good place to stop if you learned something today please check out my channel for more videos like this and click subscribe. Click the notification bell below so you'll get notified whenever I'll be posting a new video. Don't forget to like this video to show your support. And always remember to math your way up.
Thank you.